Welcome into Broncos Weekend. I'm Matt Boyer. Alexis Perry, Alfred Williams, and Voice of the Fan are coming up shortly. But first, as always, in studio, Hall of Famer. Steve What's Atwater. Up, my boyer. Steve, George Payton, and Vic Fangio, we know they've been hard at work ever since the offseason began, but we heard from them for the first time this week. This was the Combine Media Session Sands Combine. <laughs> <laughs> In thinking about their comments this week, what stood out to you the most? Uh, probably just the confirmation that they really want to get uh, Justin Simmons signed to a deal. Now, it's interesting to me, though, that, they, that Garrett Bowles, he came in and he, the first couple of years, he didn't play up to his potential. But last year, man, he he hit it all. He hit it out the park. And they compensated him for it. Now, Justin Simmons, on the other hand, he came in and he outplayed, you know, his his contract. He, mm-hmm. he, he overperformed, I think, what everyone expected from him. And, you know, I'd like to see him get compensated as well. Two guys, similar situations, but Justin has proven that he can play at a high level as well. So uh, pay the man. Justin's one of our core guys, as you know, and, and our goal, you know, since I got here is to sign him to a long-term deal. And so we, we've had good discussions with his agent. You know, I don't know if we'll get a deal done or not, but that's our goal. And he's the type of guy we want to extend. Do you feel like a long-term deal is imminent for Justin Simmons? Or do you think the franchise tag is coming and we're going to have to hear about this for a little while longer? Yeah, I mean, I, we talked about this a little bit before the show, I, I, and I agree with you. I, I think that it may be a short-term uh, franchise tag where they say, hey, Justin, we may tag you because we don't have all this worked out now. we got a lot of moving parts. But we're going to get this done before we get to training camp. But it looks like Justin Simmons is going to be here for the long term, and uh, I'm extremely happy about that. Um, another guy who's already been Orange and Blue for a long time is Vaughn Miller. We heard for the first time from George Payton that we want Vaughn back. Now, his legal situation needs to get ironed out. George Payton acknowledged that. However, it seemed like they were emphatic about getting Vaughn Miller in Denver for the foreseeable future. So how confident, Steve, do you think that's going to happen based on what we heard? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, they didn't really give away any clues. Uh, now, they said the right things, and, uh, you know, I'm pulling for that to happen. I, I want that. I think you, we all want it to course, happen. We yeah. want Von Miller to finish his career here. But as we know, many times, you know, with the numbers the way they are right now, um, and, you know, with you know, Von Miller, you know, having been here, and his number is extremely high, uh, and him not, you know, not playing the season last year, I'm not sure if that will play uh, a part in it. Uh, you know, will he? Will they be able to come to a number that, that makes both of them happy? Um, I'm hoping that it does. But, you know, many times guys get later in their careers and they end up having to, you know, finish up someplace else. I'm, I'm hoping that that doesn't happen, but it's certainly a possibility. One name that we've heard a lot this offseason is Drew Locke and the quarterback situation. We've talked a lot about it, Steve. I know we've got to talk about it a little bit again because George Payton said he did a deep dive on Drew Locke. Obviously, like I said in my press conference, very talented you know, was inconsistent at times, has a lot to work on, but, you know, I've spoken with Drew. I see him every day. He's here early. He's working. Um, you know, he really wants to be great. And, uh, you know, we're always going to try to bring in competition at every position and, and quarterback, you know, as well. But uh, I like the track that Drew's on. They said that they want competition at the position like they want competition at every yeah. position. So what was your take when you heard George talk about Drew Locke? Well, uh, I don't think any player likes to hear those words. Going to bring in competition. Everybody needs competition. Like, wait a minute, we're not talking about everybody. We're talking about the quarterback (laughs) position. Uh, So uh, I think that they are going to bring in some competition. Now, what will the level of that competition be? That's that's what I'm interested in seeing. I'm I'm interested in seeing, are they going to bring in a guy that can beat out Drew Locke, that can possibly beat out Drew Locke, or are they going to bring in a guy who can probably – Play with them and, you know, compete for a year and just kind of just warm up the seat for Drew Locke. A guy like a Ryan Fitzpatrick, that's, he fits in that category for me. But if we're talking Jameis Winston or Deshaun Watson, that's a whole nother level. We, we'll be able to tell by who they bring in what their thoughts are. One thing I also want to note, too, is the fact that George was not out on Drew Locke by any stretch of right. the imagination. He said that Drew has been in the building consistently almost every day this offseason trying to get better. So if somebody's going to come in and take Drew Locke's spot, they're going to have to work for it. Steve, i got to give you credit because you a couple weeks ago said that on this program that you wanted to see guys 
the free agents, the in-house free agents for the Broncos come back. You wanted to see that continuity kept. Yeah. And it sounded like we're going to make an attempt to keep a majority of these guys here. And a couple of the restricted free agents that were mentioned, Alexander Johnson, Tim Patrick, Philip Lindsay, all of those guys are expected to get tenders from the Broncos at what level we don't know. So they're going to make an attempt to keep those restricted free agents. What does that tell you about the type of team that they're, they're trying to build by bringing back all of those guys, but also trying to keep that continuity together? Yeah, they, they, that's important. I, I think that, George Payton knows that. It's important to have that continuity, not only with your players, but also with your coaches. And, you know, I've, I've noticed that from year year to year that, you know, you have a bunch of guys who are free agents and then a lot of guys are available, but then heck, 80, 85% of those guys end up signing right back with the same team. I, I remember when I first started back wor- working with the Broncos, you know, I got so excited in the offseason, like, man, it's going to be a ton of changes. And then the next year, like, that many changes <laughs> so I think that's just the way that it is uh unless the team just you know falls apart or you know has a bunch of changes in the coaching staff you know they, they want to deal with people who they know and, and you know they know they can push the right buttons to make them play so uh I'm happy that uh we're going to have a majority of the guys back at least it looks like that right now um and I'm glad that it's important to both uh coach Fangio and George Payton to keep the nucleus intact Fingers crossed that we see a lot of these guys back in orange and blue. We've got to take a quick break, but when we come back on Broncos weekend, Big Al, Steve, he's joining the A-team. Big Al is back. Alfred Williams is once again joining Atwater's A-team. This time, Steve and Al are talking about Vaughn Miller and what the next steps forward for number 58 could be. Plus, Alexis Perry is back with Voice of the Fan, this time with a Broncos superfan from Ohio. We're headed to the Buckeye State. Don't go anywhere. What could be next for Von Miller and the Broncos? Welcome back to Broncos Weekend, everybody. This week on Atwater's A-Team, Big Al. Alfred Williams is once again joining Steve Atwater to give his thoughts on the Broncos' preeminent pass rusher, Von Miller, and also discuss what the next steps forward for number 58's career could be. Big Al, Big Al, man, you got the beautiful scenery. How you doing today, man? Man, I'm doing well, man. You know, we starting to uh, enter uh, this time period where Colorado, once again, is the king of all weather. And uh, spring here is beautiful. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you get snow. Sometimes you get a little rain. Sometimes it's just beautiful days like it is today. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, hey, talk about the Broncos. Free agency almost here. How active do you expect the Broncos to be when the league year opens on, on the 17th of March? I think that uh, with John stepping aside and George Payton stepping in, I think the Broncos will be quite active because I think the um, the ideas will be more concise this time. You know, maybe there were some things that John wanted uh, for the team uh, and some ideas that he wanted uh, that no longer exist. So now maybe the coaches uh, will have more input and hmm. more say to – um, George Payton about what they want and how they get it. So George Payton calls you. What would you say to him? Uh, as what? As a what, as a player? Say, hey, hey, Alfred. What, what what position do we need to address? Oh well, I'll tell you right now. The, the obvious one is quarterback. I mean, if you can have uh, in a trade situation a guy like Deshaun Watson, I'd say take him. And in the other position, I would say uh, the, the the same position, but I say there may be an easier fix than that, and that is getting a guy like Jameis Winston in here. You know, everybody talks about the 30 interceptions that he had. 50 TDs, though. Right. You know, so <laughs> they don't they don't want to, you know, for some reason, they forgot the, the fact that this guy is uh, over four years, uh, excuse me, over five years, has nearly 20,000 passing yards. 20,000. Yeah. And during that time period, he had more – attempts at anybody in the NFL. That experience counts. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the quarterback position, and, and I'm not as afraid to say that we need an upgrade there. We need Drew Locke to uh, uh, play like he can, but but also you need better coordination. You got to make sure that he has the throws that he easily completes. Yeah, yeah. And what about Von Miller here? You know, outside rusher, what has made him so effective over his career, man? He has he has unbelievable lower body strength and flexibility, Steve. I'm telling you, when I'm when I'm watching this guy, I wish that I could do some of the things he can do as a pass rusher. You did it. You I, did it. I did. I did some of the things, but I mean, his his 
his dip to get around the corner is unlike any I've ever seen. I've, I've never seen a guy slip underneath the arms. Well, I have. Derek Thomas. I've yeah. actually seen Derek Thomas slip under the arms of an offensive tackle, but Vaughn does it routinely, and it's a scary thought because you can totally miss a guy, and he can be right there on your quarterback on his throwing shoulder. So it's and it happened in Super Bowl Fifty where he was uh, Super Bowl MVP. So it, yeah. it he, he's a unique guy, and and if it was me, uh, and I'm George Payton, uh, I probably would just leave that contract alone, just leave him there, and see how it goes. I think he is. Underappreciated, believe it or not. Underappreciated in the Denver Broncos, um, uh, in the Denver Broncos hierarchy. You know, you only get so many of these guys. And I, you know, I used to tell the story all the time. I used to tell the story about our locker room when we won Super Bowl 32 and 33. The two guys that uh, spoke when they needed to uh, were you and Shannon Sharp. But both of you guys were uh, raised in that organization, drafted in that organization, and grew with the organization. To have a guy like that in your organization and have had the kind of success that he's had, he's a valuable commodity. And if if, if uh, we don't keep him under the current contract, I fear that he may be gone. He's a guy that is in the top 10 of Denver Broncos of all time because of uh, his uniqueness. And the, the, the celebration of his career has been long and storied. You know, yeah. if you're looking at a guy who is, when healthy, a Pro Bowl guy. Is there a position facing this 2021 Broncos that isn't being discussed that you feel deserves more attention? Defensive tackle. Defensive tackle. Okay. I mean, all right, ab- all right. absolutely defensive tackle because um, every team needs a DNA. Uh, and, 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 you know, our DNA should have looked like maybe the old Pittsburgh Steelers because what should have happened is that we should have known what kind of players were necessary to repeat and go back to the Super Bowl, win another Super Bowl, and we should have been stacking those players uh, year after year. When you lose a guy like Derek Wolf uh, to free agency, you, you're losing a type of guy, right? Not not only is he a great guy, but he's a type, a body type that you got to replace. Yeah. And if you don't replace that body type, then you can't have the same kind of production. I, I know you may want interior pass rush. You may want guys who can hold the point at nose tackle, but at defensive tackle slash defensive end, that guy has got to be six foot five, six foot six, six foot seven, 280, 285 pounds, because all the guys that he's playing against are six, six. He's got to be able to strike and find the ball. And we haven't really done a good job of replacing Derek Wolf or duplicating the guys that look like him to play the defensive line. And, and, I'm not telling you that it has to be a high production guy, but I'm saying that you should know what that guy looks like and you should have a bunch of those guys on your roster. And I, and I think that's a position that we're thin at. Alpha Williams, you're the best. I appreciate you. Uh, continue success, my man. All right. Go Broncos, buddy. Our thanks to Alfred Williams for taking some time with us this week when we come back on Broncos Weekend. Alexis Perry is bringing us another edition of Voice of the Fan. Hear the origin story of one of Broncos country's biggest fans despite spending her entire life in the Midwest. That's next. Time now for Voice of the Fan, Broncos country. Alexis Perry has literally taken us across the world telling your stories of how you became a Broncos fan. This week, we are headed to Ohio to meet Jenna Cast, a Broncos fan who was taught her Broncos fandom by a babysitter as a kid, but she's kept that fandom going her entire life. Thanks a lot, Matt. Well, it's our first Broncos weekend show since the official start of Women's History Month, so it's only fitting that we hear from one of the loudest and proudest female fans, Jenna Cast. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us today and representing the ladies of Broncos country. Yes. Yeah, thank you so What's much up, for having Jenna? me. We're so <laughs> excited. Now, you know, speaking of history, we have to know how you became a Broncos fan, given the fact that you're originally from Michigan, but now in Perrysburg, Ohio. I mean, you had a few different teams to choose from the Lions, Browns, Bengals. Somehow you picked the Denver Broncos. How did that even happen? Yeah, so it's a great story. So my family growing up are all huge football fans. Um, we spent every Sunday, you know, in front of the TV and when I was little, uh, probably like five, six, I, I got it in my head that, hey, I need to learn some about football and really fit in with my family. Um, so while the parents were gone one night, the babysitter was over. A Broncos game happened to be on. Um, 
during the great John Elway uh, era in which my babysitter was a huge fan of. Um, and so I kind of asked her, I was like, Hey, like, tell me some about football. And the only part that I remember her saying was we root for the Broncos and wow. it totally stuck with me. And I continued on for that. And then the next weekend, um, Sunday came around my parents were in front of the TV watching a game and I come up and I'm like, Hey, go Broncos. <laughs> and my mom <laughs> looks at me and she's like, what, what are you talking about? They're not even playing right now. And I said, oh, well, you know, that's all I know. <laughs> and so it stuck with me for life. Um, I, I've grown with the team, I learned more. And as soon as I graduated college, um, I started going to games. So I've been to one game every year since I graduated, excluding this past season due to COVID stuff. So, yeah. Wow, you are a super fan and we appreciate it. Hey, of all the great moments in franchise history, which would you consider to be your favorite? Yeah, so obviously there's a lot of good moments to choose from. Um, I think my favorite was uh, during the Super Bowl 50 season. Um, obviously winning the Super Bowl was amazing. Yeah, that was but amazing too. I specifically <laughs> remember um, a Sunday night game against the Green Bay Packers. We came into the game, both teams undefeated. And I think coming into that game, everyone was like, okay, this is gonna be Aaron Rodgers versus Peyton Manning, this great quarterback matchup. But the story of the game was that Denver Broncos defense that just absolutely put on a display that night. And it got me so excited. And as a fan, that was the moment for me where I really felt like this is the team that could take it all the way. Like we could win this whole thing. You know, you've, like you mentioned, you've gone to a game at least every year since you graduated. How do you show your love for the Broncos on game day? I saw maybe some arts and crafts are involved. Yes. So I, the first game I went to, I was like, you know, I have to make a sign. I have to get noticed by some of the players on the sidelines. Um, and so then I started making a sign every year. So yes, I've had a sign for every game. And um, specifically the first three games, I was wearing my Emmanuel Sanders jersey to the game and Emmanuel waved at me before every game. So he noticed. Who's your favorite guy on this current roster and why? Oh, it has to be Philip Lindsay. Um, as much as I love Go the Bucks. defense, <laughs> yeah. Go. As as much as I love the defense, um, my favorite player right now is Philip Lindsay. And, and you know, it's really because he's an undrafted free agent. And I think that that's a lot of what Denver has been good at, you know, for so many years is finding that guy that everyone else overlooked. And it turns out like they're an amazing player. And so I love, I just love that. He's going to be tender this year, too, which is really great news. Hopefully, we'll see him back here in a Broncos jersey in 2021. But like Stephen Matt talked about earlier in the show, you know, George Payton and Vic Fangio, they met with the media on Thursday to touch on the state of the Broncos with free agency less than two weeks away and the draft coming up here at the end of April. You know, Coach Fangio mentioned corner is one position where they'd like to add a player or two. What do you think the biggest area of concern is that the Broncos really need to address here once free agency gets underway? Well, I agree with him. I think it's the corner position. Um, however, I know a lot of people are thinking they want to use our draft pick on this. I don't think that's the way to go. We already have, uh, um, you know, a rookie in Ojemudia back there. I, I think I would like to see us go get a veteran player, similar to how we brought in Aqib Tlaib not that long ago. We need that veteran presence who can bring something to that backfield. I'd like to see somebody like an Xavier Rhodes, maybe. Uh, back there. So yes, I agree with him. And then I'd like to use our pick on a defensive lineman. I like um, Nixon from Iowa. We've had good, we've had good history with Iowa players. So, okay. Jenna, do you have any questions for the hall of famer? I would say, do you have any questions for me, but let's be real all for the hall of famer gold jacket. They, guy. Want, they want to ask you questions. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. If you got any questions for Alexis too, feel free. To <laughs> no. no. So Steve, so I talked earlier about one of my favorite franchise moments was, uh, you know, the green Bay Packers game that I felt was so so pivotal for me as a fan to realizing, hey, we can win a Super Bowl. Yeah. You've won a couple Super Bowls yourself. Was there any time, game, moment, whatever during those seasons where it clicked in your head that we can do this? This is the team that's going to take it all the way. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I would say uh, going into our first Super Bowl with the Packers, uh, I remember being in meetings with Coach Ed Donatel, who's our defense coordinator now. And uh, we were watching a lot of film and, 
you know, I think it was a Thursday and we just, we just, we had enough. We, we felt like we were ready. We didn't want to watch any more film. And normally we stay and we, we watch film the whole time. We said, coach, we got it. We're good. And he just turned out the film and said, all right, y'all ready. And uh, hey, it, it was in the bag. And uh, we went out and we, we all played well. It really, really was a special moment for me. Probably one of my most special moments. Yeah, awesome. Well, yeah. Jenna, thank you so much for being such a passionate and loyal Broncos fan. Even in the midst of Browns, Bengals, heck, even Colts territory. <laughs> we so appreciate you. Go Broncos. Yes, we appreciate you. And man, she's a student of the game too. I love it. I know, I love it. X's and O's, baby. Thank you, Alexis. And a special thanks to Jenna as well for always repping the orange and blue in Cleveland Browns territory. That'll do it for us today on Broncos Weekend. Special thanks to Alexis Barry, Alfred Williams, and of course, the Hall of Famer, Steve Atwater. I'm Matt Boyer. So long, Broncos country. We will see you next week.